In the previous video, we have discussed how we are going to tackle finding the path between start and end position on our map. Now, we will start implementing the A star pathfinding algorithm. We will need it to check if there is a path between our two points. First, we need to implement our data structure called vertex position. So let's now create a new folder in our scripts folder. Let's call it A star. OK. And here, let's create a new C sharp class called vertex position. And let's open it up. OK, so the vertex position is the data class that will store all the information that A star algorithm needs to loop through each position on our grid. It isn't a tutorial on A star algorithm, but let's uh, see the theory behind this algorithm to understand it a little better. So the main idea is that we create an open list and add to this list a start point as the vertex position class. While the open list contains an element, we need to sort the list and get the first element, so the element with the lowest total cost, which we will discuss in a bit. Next, we check the neighbors of this element, excluding of course the obstacles, because we cannot move on the obstacle cells. So if our neighbor is not on the closed list, that contains elements that we have already visited, then we calculate the total cost of this element, and save its parent, so the uh, element from which we reached this neighbor, uh, in a vertex position instance. Then we place the neighbor on the open list and put the current element in the closed list. Now we also check every time if current element is equal to exit point. If it is, we return the path already found by looping through uh, each of the elements and getting their parent because we have stored the reference to the parent from where we have came to this element. And if this last element is not equal to exit point and there are no more points on the open list, this means there is no path available to take and we return an empty list. Now this might be a very brief introduction to A star if you are not familiar with it, but I'm sure when we start implementing it we'll, you will get a better understanding of what it does and how it does it. So I'm going back to the code editor and let's start from deleting the model behavior inheritance but instead, we want to inherit two uh, interfaces. I equitable, alt enter, and you should be able to use uh, system I equitable, and we will give it type of our vertex position. This will allow us to use this vertex, po uh, vertex position in generic lists uh, to call contains or remove methods and it will allow us to compare two vertex, vertices or two vertex position instances. So to implement it, we need to click on it, Alt Enter Implement Interface, and we will implement it in a bit. And we need another one of those, I comparable, and also of type vertex position. And this interface in turn will allow us to sort our list and we will implement it as well in a bit. First of all, let's create a public static list of the vector to ints. I need to be using system collections generic vector to int, and we will call it possible neighbors equals new list. And as you might have recalled it, we have created a similar list for our knights, uh, knight pieces class. So here we are, we will store all the offsets for our possible neighbors. So let's create new vector to int. So we need to go, we can go um, down one step. We can go again, uh, let's copy this. We can go one step up. So uh, one on y axis. We can you go to the right, so one zero, and we can go to the left, so minus one zero. 
Okay, great. So those are our possible neighbors for each uh, cell on our grid. Okay, and now what we need to do is to implement some specific parameters for our A star algorithm. So we need public load total cost and estimated cost. Okay, so let's go back to slides and let's discuss what is the cost. So the cost is the sum of total cost and the estimated cost. So total cost is the distance from the start point to this point. And because we are moving neighbor to neighbor, uh, we know that this path is uh, walkable because we have moved through it. We have deleted this night, so we have created this path. We know this is the valid path and its cost is static. Now estimated cost, we can calculate the estimated cost by just finding the shortest path between the current point and the end point. But this is the estimated cost because we do not know what is in front of this uh, our current point. We have not yet checked its neighbors. So you can see that there are a couple of obstacles here. So and we will not be able to move on to this neighbor. So that's why it is called estimate cost. And we will move looking for the, its neighbors and possibly find this neighbor and calculate its cost, which is a little bit smaller than this cost even, then we are going to just keep on moving here and uh, up and here and go to the exit point. So basically that is how we calculate the cost for each point by taking what we know, which is the uh, cost from the start point and estimating the cost to the exit point and we will check the most prominent neighbors for uh, their position. So let's go back to our code editor. Okay, so we have our total cost and estimated cost. Now what we need to do is have a parent uh, reference. So public vertex position previous vertex equals null. So this will be the previous position that we have came from and this way, this way we will be able to go from the end point that we have reached eventually uh, by getting its previous vertex until we reach the start point and this will represent our path. So next thing we should store a position, so private vector3 position we will have a public prop, so let's call prop double tap tab int x and we will only get it so what we will want to get is the int, uh, the cast to int of position dot x and the same we will want to have for y value we need to finish the statement so we have easy time getting those two values. So we, uh, sorry, not y but z. And we will want to get the z value from our position. Great. And we also will want to get this position. So left click, quick action, encapsulate. And we only want to get it. Great. Next, we need to have a constructor. So let's type ctor double tap tab and here we will take a ver uh, vector 3 as the position and the boolean value is taken and let's set it to false by default so we will know whether this vertex position is taken or not so we need to have another private variable of type bool is taken Okay, and we can also use a, a quick action and expose it using property. And let's only get it. Okay, now we have access to all the parameters of our vertex position. Now let's create a vertex in the constructor type, type uh, this position equals position. This is taken equals is taken. This estimated cost will uh, for start be zero and this dot uh, total cost is one 
So we always set total cost to 1 at the beginning, and then we are going to add to it. Now what we need to do as well is to override our get hash code and to compare to vertex positions we will return position so our vert uh, vector dot get hash code so that that is how we are going to compare if do two vertex positions are the same position we will also need to create public int get hash code and that takes a vector three position let's say object and we'll return object dot get hash code great and our last step is to implement our interfaces so here in the compare to we are going to check if our this estimated cost is less than other estimated cost we will return minus one if our this estimated cost is greater than other estimated cost we'll, uh, we will return 1 and else return 0 a quick note we should probably here uh, compare a cost instead of estimated cost because later in HTAR implementation I will put the cost so the sum of total cost and estimated cost into the estimated cost variable now it is very confusing but because the later tutorial parts are using this code uh, that's why I am not changing this just wanted to let you know why is it the estimated cost because in reality I will put everything so the cost the total cost plus the estimated cost inside this estimated cost variable so sorry about that back to the video so if we return minus one we say that this vertex position comes before the other vertex position since this estimated cost is less on the other hand if we return one we say that this vertex position has higher value of estimated cost and it goes after the other vertex in our list and if we return zero it means that both vertices are equal to each other okay and last thing we need is our equals so we will return if position of this vertex position is equal to other dot position. So basically what we say that vertex positions are equal only when their vector threes are equal. And this will be used for adding, removing and uh, contains methods. While compare to will be used when we are sorting our collection. Okay, so basically that's it for our uh, vertex position. In the next video, we will start implementing the A-star algorithm itself.